this punishment by the majority is enough. <clears throat> so you should rather turn to forgive and comfort him. In Jesus' name, dearly beloved. Your sin, after all, is not for you. It's for Jesus. Yes, you still fall into them. Yes, you still struggle with them. At times, all you can see, smell, taste, and think about are your sins. So overwhelming can they be. Still, your sins are not for you anymore. They are for Jesus now. He claimed them all. And he saw every one of them before you were born, before you even committed a single one of them. Claimed them all as his when he suffered and died for you on the cross. Your sins are for Jesus now, not for you. Smile at that. You're supposed to. It's the joy of all God's people. My sins are for Jesus now, not for me. The problem in Corinth wasn't, was, wasn't that there was a sinner in church. That's who his church is for. The problem was that someone there was insisting on their sin. They didn't want to confess their sin, didn't want God's help and grace in turning from their sin. They wanted to flaunt it, wanted to parade it, felt it showed everyone how more enlightened they were than everyone else. More enlightened, more like you're damning yourself because... That's what happens when you insist on you, not Jesus, having your sin. Oh, something had to be done to help this poor sinner who, like every one of us, ever offends God and justly deserves His temporal and eternal punishment because of our own sin. The pastor, along with the congregation, needed to get his attention, help him see the gravity of sin, his sin, and call him to repentance for it. How? It finally came down to the binding key. That's how. And that key accomplished what God sent it for, his sin, retained by the pastor, called him to repentance, filled him with sorrow over it. No forgiveness for your sin is meant to do that. Not as an end in itself, but so that along with everyone else in that congregation of sinners, this man could rejoice anew, not in license for sin, but in forgiveness for sins. Forgiveness purchased for all our sins, no matter what they are, by Jesus' death for every last one of them upon the cross. Forgiveness bestowed now by the promise of Jesus' word, bestowed now by the promise of Jesus' water, bestowed now by the promise of Jesus' holy supper. For all sinners, no sinner excluded, no sins left off his cross. Understand, says St. Paul, it's one thing to suffer sin being in your life. And we must all do that because we are all sinners. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. That's one thing. But it is an entirely different thing. To decide for yourself, you're not going to suffer that. No matter what the Word of God says. I don't need forgiveness for this lifestyle, this behavior. I don't care what the Bible says. Everyone else, just get over it. Like I said, that's an entirely different thing than suffering sin, being in your life. But pastor, what if I can't seem to shake free from my sins? I mean, I want to be done with them. I want Jesus to have my sins at least. I think I do, but my sin keeps coming back. Keeps getting the better of me, reminding me and everyone else, and certainly God himself, what a damnable creature I am. Welcome to the club. I've been a card caring member of this club since the day I was baptized. No, your baptism does not exclude you from this club. It welcomes you. Even gives you a place at his table every Sunday so he can feed you his body and blood and say to you, for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Your sin troubles you? Good. It should. But this just means, my friend, Jesus still has a job to do. Another sinner to go to work for. 
And so He does. He carries you and all your sins to the cross for you. Forever separating you from your sins. Forever saving you from your sins. And to teach you to see your sins still on the cross with Him and not with you. Never with you. Always with Him. Even if the struggle is so overwhelming you stumble and fall 70 times 7. Even then. Especially then. Even if I never seem to improve and certain sins keep getting the better of me. Even then. Especially then. Even if... Stop it. To teach you to see your sins on the cross with Him now. And not with you. Never with you. Jesus had you baptized. Forever promising you the washing and cleansing of His cross in the water. Forgiven. Gave you a pastor to repeat and renew again and again for you the promise of His cross and the absolutions and sermons they speak to you. Forgiven. And forgiver of sins that He is. Jesus prepares a table for you now in the midst of all your sins. And says to you, take eat, this is My body. Take drink, this is My blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Forgiven. Your sins, you see, are not for you anymore. They don't belong to you. You don't own them. He owns them now. They belong to Him. Your sins do not define you anymore. He defines you now. His cross, His death, His sacrifice, His Word, His water, and His supper. In one word, Forgiven. Smile at that. You're supposed to. Your sins are His now, not yours. In Jesus' name, Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.